Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. And as always, before we get started, I'd just like to take a quick moment to welcome all my new subs and to thank everybody who's leaving me comments and messages down below. Thank you guys, that's awesome. And in case you all didn't notice, does it look like I'm somewhere different right now? Not in my normal studio room? Well, if you guessed yes, then you are right. I am currently in New York City doing a video project. So come along for the ride while we explore this amazing city and all the connections that this city has to the ill-fated RMS Titanic. Well, that was fun. So in case you didn't realize what was going on in that last shot, essentially what I tried to do was film the intro for my historic travels videos in the streets of New York City, just like I would in my studio here at home. Which, I mean, it came out okay, but still it wasn't anywhere near as good as the intros that I do in my regular studio, which is where I am right now. So I still think I need to clarify a few things from that intro in this video right here. But still, I thought it was a good effort, so I thought I would include it in this video. So essentially what this video is, uh, for those of you who don't know, last week I went to New York City because I wanted to try to visit as many Titanic monuments or landmarks in the city as possible and then make a video about it and explain where these landmarks are, what their connection is to the Titanic, and just some of the history around these landmarks. Now, I found a website that actually lifts off a lot of them, but I wasn't able to visit everything, but I did do a pretty good job, I think, so I was able to visit quite a few landmarks, so that's what this video is going to be about. In this video, I'm going to talk about my trip to New York. I'm going to talk about the landmarks that I visited in the city that are connected to the ill-fated RMS Titanic. I'm gonna tell you guys where these landmarks are just in case you want to visit them, your, visit them yourself and explain some of the history around these famous landmarks in New York City. All right, guys, well, hey, without any further ado, let's get into it. New York City, a city full of life, culture, and history. And this city was one of the first places that most immigrants who were traveling to America from Europe in the early 1900s came when they first stepped foot on American soil. New York City is located in the northeast part of the United States in the state of New York right along the east coast, and this city's location made it a perfect destination for ocean liners in the early 1900s to drop off immigrants who were sailing to America from Europe in those days. However, even though those days are now far behind us, if you go to New York City today and you keep a sharp eye out, you can still spot the relics from this time period still within the city. And it should be no surprise that there are a lot of landmarks in this city that are connected to the ill-fated RMS Titanic, because this city was the destination of the RMS Titanic during its maiden voyage. So, sit back and relax and join me on this video while we explore some of the most famous landmarks in New York City that are connected to the ill-fated RMS Titanic. The first location that I visited in New York City that was connected to the RMS Titanic happened to be the Titanic Memorial Park located at the southern tip of the island. At this small little park, there exists a small lighthouse that was built to commemorate the sinking of the RMS Titanic. This lighthouse was constructed in the year 1913, and it was heavily supported to be built by none other than the unsinkable Molly Brown. However, in 1913, when this lighthouse was first constructed, it wasn't built in the current position that the lighthouse stands today. You see, at the time, the lighthouse was built on the roof of the old Siemens Church Institute of New York and New Jersey, and this building was roughly southeast of where the lighthouse currently exists today. Basically, the lighthouse is a little bit closer to the bay, so it'd be clearly visible by all ships sailing into the New York Harbor. And you see, at the time, this lighthouse actually served a purpose. That was the reason why it had to be built so close to the river. You see, at the very top of this lighthouse, there exists a ball. And every day at noon, this ball would slide down the pole, signifying to all the people on ships in the harbor that it was high noon in New York City. And the lighthouse continued to serve this purpose for a very long time. It remained on the roof of the building from the year 1913 to the year 1967. And at this time, the Siemens Church Institute moved from that building to another location in New York City. And at this time period, the lighthouse was taken down. And then in the year 1976, the lighthouse was restored and put in its current position in New York City, where you can currently visit the lighthouse today. Now, once I had finished taking pictures of the Titanic Lighthouse, I then headed further south to the South Street Seaport Museum. Now, while there's nothing here that's directly connected to the RMS Titanic, there is a few interesting things to look at here if you are interested in maritime history in New York City. 
One interesting thing that I found at this seaport museum was the ship Wavertree. The Wavertree was built in the year 1885 and it is one of the very last sailing ships ever constructed. At the time that this ship was built, the steam engine was finally beginning to gain traction and it was slowly beginning to replace the traditional sailing ships, which makes the Wavertree really the last of her generation of ships. Another interesting piece of maritime history that they have at this seaport museum is this lightship. Now for those of you who don't know, a lightship is essentially a floating lighthouse, and its purpose was to guide ships into whichever harbor or bay that the ship was sailing towards. This ship obviously served in the New York Harbor. And honestly, when I realized that this vessel was built in the year 1908, that means this vessel was around when the Lusitania sailed into New York City, when the Olympic sailed into New York City. I mean, just think about that. This vessel that you're looking at right now was around when those ships sailed into the New York Harbor. And another unofficial use for a light ship was for ships to compete for something that was called the Blue Ribbon. Now the Blue Ribbon is essentially an unofficial award that is given to ships that have the fastest crossing time of the Atlantic. So essentially when a ship passes a light ship in Southampton and then the ship passes the light ship in New York, that essentially means a voyage completed. And whichever ship has the fastest time in crossing the Atlantic, well, that ship gets the blue ribbon. The Lusitania had it for a while. The Mauritania had it for a while. But yeah, just think about that. This particular light ship was what they used to signify which ships won the blue ribbon in those days. And honestly, that's a pretty amazing thing to lay witness to. After I left the pier, then I proceeded over to the west side of the island where I could get a good view of the Statue of Liberty. Now, I didn't travel over to Liberty Island, although I did take some photos of the statue from the shoreline in Manhattan. And honestly, when I look at the Statue of Liberty, I can't help but think about the RMS Carpathia steaming into New York City with the Titanic survivors. And just thinking that this statue was the first thing that all those people on the Carpathia saw as they were steaming into New York, having just survived the sinking of the RMS Titanic. So one thing you guys should probably know about me, whenever I visit an area that has major historical significance, I tend to try to imagine what it must have been like to be at that spot at that moment in history to actually see this event or to actually see what made this location famous for, you know? Like, you know, just seeing all these landmarks in New York that were connected to the Titanic, imagining the Carpathia steaming into New York City. And I also really experienced this when I visited London a few years ago. If you travel to London in September, at least they did this pre-COVID, I don't know if they're doing it now, but in September you can actually go and tour Buckingham Palace and I had the privilege to be able to do that. And when I was inside Buckingham Palace, I was just imagining how many people throughout history had walked within these walls. And honestly, it just, it blew my mind. So, and I was, I was experiencing something similar to that in New York City. And when I went to my next destination within the city, Pier 54, let me just say that that one location holds a very huge historical significance in the story of the RMS Titanic. Pier 54 is located on the west side of New York City, right along the coastline of the Hudson. And honestly, if you were visiting this location and you didn't know what you were looking at, then it's very easy to overlook how important this pier is in regards to maritime history. If you visit Pier 54 today, essentially what you'll find is a tiny little artificial island that was recently constructed by the city of New York. And this little island contains a tiny little park where people can walk around, enjoy some music, enjoy some nature. And honestly, it's a pretty cool thing to see. Now, as you begin to approach this island and you begin to walk across the bridge leading from the island of Manhattan over to this tiny little park, you are essentially walking at the spot of where some of the greatest ocean liners in maritime history arrived in New York City. Pier 54 was once used by the Cunard Line as their primary pier where they would unload passengers from their ships once they arrived in New York City. So that means a lot of famous Cunard ships like the Aquitania, the Lusitania, the Mauritania, the Carpathia, all of these ships used Pier 54. And uh, this also means that this is the very spot where the RMS Carpathia arrived in New York to drop off the Titanic survivors. And this is also the very pier where the RMS Lusitania departed on her final voyage before sinking in May of 1915. Now, when you visit Pier 54 today, the only hint of what this pier was formerly used for exists in the form of this metal archway that exists right in front of the little island park that I was talking about earlier. And there's no plaque, there's no memorial, there's nothing 
around this archway that would actually tell you what it is, but if you look very carefully, you can barely make out the faded letters of Canard White Star. So the reason it says Canard White Star and not just Canard Line is because Canard Line and White Star Line merged in the 1930s after the Great Depression. But still, this is the only relic left of that era that would actually signify the historical significance of Pier 54. So here's the thing. I really think Pier 54 is already a great place to visit in New York City. You know, I really like that little island park they made. I like it that they put the trees up and all that. And I especially like it that they preserved the Canard White Star Line archway. You know, I think that's insanely cool that they actually kept that there. Although I think the one thing that they still need at this site is a memorial plaque or something to let the general public know the historical significance of the site. Because think about it. Pier 54 is already a really cool place to visit, you know, for people who like that park. And it's also a cool place to visit for those of us who are really into ocean liners. But us ocean liner enthusiasts like it because we know the historical significance, which most people don't. Most people don't know that this is the spot where the Carpathia arrived in New York City. Most people don't know that this is the site where the RMS Lusitania departed on her final voyage before she sank. And I think that if they would just put like a memorial plaque up to let people know that, hey, this stuff happened right here, I think that would go a long way to make the site better. That way that most people now who visit the site will understand the historical significance of where they're currently standing. So I think that just putting up a memorial plaque would make this site a thousand times better than how it is today. All right, everybody. Well, hey, look, I'm going to wrap up the video here. So I didn't have time to put in every single landmark that I visited in New York City on that trip in this video. So there is going to be a part two in my sightseeing in New York City. So stand by for that. And all right, guys. Well, hey, thank you all so much for watching. And here from Historic Travels, I want to wish everybody here a very happy 4th of July. I hope you all have a great holiday. And yeah, guys, hey, you all keep doing what you're doing. You guys are awesome. And all right, everybody. Well, hey, without any further ado, I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night, everybody. And thank you all so much for being here.